In 2014, the Norfolk Southern acquired nine ex-Burlington Northern Triclops SD60Ms, three ex-New York Susquehanna and Western SD70Ms, seven ex-Santa Fe SD75Ms, and 100 ex-Union Pacific SD9043 Max. The 90s, of course, were to be used as the cores for NS's SD70 ACU rebuilding program. Shortly after, NS acquired 10 more SD9043 Max in blue, purple, and red. The SD70 ACUs, along with the later SD70 ACCs, SD70 MACE, and SD70 Mac H added four new rebuild models to EMD's eclectic SD70 AC family, which is the subject of this video. There has always been a feeling among some people that the two-stroke engine would not be able to meet the tightening environmental regulations as easily as a four-stroke, which may be why EMD moved toward a four-stroke as the new prime mover design. The problem with the two-stroke is said to be twofold. They tend to burn more lubricating oil as they run, which add to pollutants, and there is a carryover of some of the charge when the cylinder is scavenged, meaning that some of the unburned fuel can pass through the cylinder from intake to exhaust and increase hydrocarbon emissions. These are both difficult problems to solve while sustaining fuel efficiency at the same time. Looking back at the old GE engine, as an example, the road switchers started out at around 2,500 horsepower and with modifications are now producing 4,400 horsepower. One problem is to find a place to put all of that fuel that a larger engine consumes. The underframe nowadays seems to be pretty well full on modern day locomotives. Intermodal trains tend to require lots of horsepower. And if a higher horsepower locomotive can be produced at a lower cost per horsepower than present locomotives, it will sell. Union Pacific, for example, likes to put 15,000 to 20,000 horsepower on some of their intermodal trains, or so it would seem. As far as running light units together, when you have over 1,400 of them, that's going to happen. Seeing as they're the mainstream of Union Pacific's direct current traction fleet, it's even less surprising since they're not going to mix AC and DC quite as much because they're each better at different tasks. The big ACs seem to go on the coal, intermodal and freight drags while the SD70Ms end up on the lighter side of the workload and heavy locals, generally speaking. Just the same as you'd assign a GP40-2 to the yard and not in coal service in 2022. The real question regarding the SD70s, especially for UP, is when they'll be replaced or rebuilt. Remember that record-setting 2,000 unit lease order that saved EMD at the time? Another 2K unit order or rebuilding project to EMD would re-establish the marketplace and keep GE honest and on their toes, especially in the pricing. My guess is that it'll be a long time before the SD70Ms are actually replaced on UP, since they're still using 35 to 40 year old SD40-2s that have been rebuilt for continued service. Or at least we can always hope. The SD70 Mac was introduced in 1993 following two years of tests with four SD60 Mac prototypes. It was EMD's first production locomotive with AC traction motors and, along with the rest of the SD70 series, was the first to use EMD self-steering bolsterless HTCR truck design. Burlington Northern and later the Bensef accounted for the majority of production, ordering nearly 800 units over the following seven years. The precise control and ruggedness of AC traction motors allowed for superior performance in both low-speed lugging and dynamic braking, and AC traction has since become ubiquitous on modern, successful freight units sold in America. The SD70 Mac was produced alongside the DC-powered SD70M and related models such as the SD70 and the SD75i. Although the two models shared many similarities, there were some differences aside from the traction system. 
SD70 Max rode on a slightly longer underframe, 74 feet versus 72 feet 4 inches over the coupler pulling faces with the extra hood length visible behind the radiator intakes. While DC models use two separate traction motor blowers, the SD70 Mac continued to use the central blower design of earlier EMD models, with a duct on the left side extending from the hood and running along the walkway. The inverters for the AC traction motors were housed at either end of the hood, one under the dynamic brake intakes and one under the rear half of the radiator intakes. Most SD70 Max were rated at 4,000 horsepower and later units uprated to 4,300 horsepower. Most were also built with EMD's isolated cab, which can easily be identified by the seam running around the nose and behind the back wall of the cab. While the SD70M received revised model designations for both changes, the SD70I for the isolated cab and the SD75M slash SD75I for the higher horsepower versions. The SD70 Mac apparently did not. No SD70 Macs were built with the older standard non-safety cab that was used on the SD70. SD70 Mac production occurred largely prior to the end of 2000 and the last SD70 Max ordered by the Alaska Railroad and CSXT after 2003 featured canted radiator intakes for a revised split cooling system. In 2005, the SD70 Mac was replaced by the SD70 ACE which met the tier 2 emission standards and which was built on a substantially revised platform. 14 former BNSF SD70 Mac locomotives were working across the Norfolk Southern System on lease from Progress Rail in 2018. The units were pulled from long-term storage in Minnesota and delivered to the NS at Streeter, Illinois in December of 2017, then ran as a special movement from Kankakee, Illinois to Bellevue, Ohio for inspection by the mechanical department. The units were then forwarded to the Chattanooga Diesel Shop, which began releasing them for service in early January. Later that month, several had worked their way to various points on the system, including northeastern Pennsylvania, but most were in service on the Alabama division down south. The units had PRLX reporting marks and were numbered from 9551 to 9564. The 9564 was in the current BNSF orange paint scheme as the remainder were the original Burlington Northern Grinstein green dress. Meanwhile, over on the CSX, 25 SD70 Max, SD70 ACs, and CSX parlance were to be upgraded and or rebuilt. The work took place at the CSX's Huntington Heavy Repair Shop. Their primary upgrade was replacing the original Siemens control systems with Mitsubishi's Melco control systems, which seems to be the trend in locomotive rebuilding these days. Their 710 engines were refurbished by having new power assemblies installed. The locomotive cabs were upgraded with new floors and ceilings, LED lighting, display screens, electric refrigerators, and camera systems. A new CCB2 air brake system was installed, and the trucks were rebuilt, and new wheel sets were being added. The process took about six weeks to complete, and the diesels returned to service in 2019 with 15 more that were to be completed in 2019 and 10 more in 2020, serving as test units for the initial 12-month trial period to evaluate if the project was worth continuing. The SD70 M-2 and SD70 ACE were a redesign of the EMD SD70 series aimed at meeting new emission standards that took effect in 2005. While they shared many mechanical components with the previous SD70M and SD70 Mac models, they received a substantially altered car body and underframe that borrowed some features previously used in the SD80 Mac and SD90 Mac series. The air reservoirs and associated piping were all moved to the engineer's side while the traction motor cables were moved to the conductor's side as on contemporary GE units. The dynamic brakes were moved from the front to the rear of the hood and a wider radiator section was located behind a lowered and tapered central hood. The underframe was several inches taller than on earlier SD70 models and resulted in a shorter cab being adopted from the late model SD90 Mac. The radial steering HTCR trucks were carried over and a new, simpler HTSC truck was introduced that lacked radial steering and rode on a shorter wheelbase. Unlike the SD70M and SD70 Mac, which rode on different underframes, the SD70M-2 and SD70 ACE were nearly identical. The main differences were the substantially thicker and more numerous DC traction motor cables, smaller traction motors, and absence of inverter cabin events on the SD70 M-2. Visual changes over the production run were numerous but relatively minor and as the SD70 ACE outsold the SD70 M-2 by a wide margin, the latter had fewer variations. 
the 60 SD70 Aces on Norfolk Southern that number from 1175 through 1234 are classified by NS as the SD70 IAC. All units are equipped with IAC, that's individual axle control, with one inverter per axle for better overall control of tractive effort. Units 1225 through 1234 were originally built in 2019 to NS specs, but for the Progress Rail lease fleet and were painted in black and white with Progress Rail logos and lettering and numbered as EMDX 2115 through 2124. The units were never used in revenue service before being acquired by NS and were repainted by Progress Rail and delivered to NS in March of this year. This year being 2022 for those of you watching this in the future. Personal opinion, I'd say that the current EMD individual motor control inverters would fit in the space of the DC switch gear on an SD70M and wouldn't require the long frame of the SD70 Mac. Just my opinion of course. I'd also expect that the older SD70 Max might get rebuilt first since they could use the existing motors just replacing the old inverters as they become unsupportable. Over at General Electric, much of the C44-9W and AC4400CW is fundamentally the same. Length, much of the equipment, layout, etc. aside from the actual traction motor package, whilst the SD70M and 75 variants are two feet shorter than the SD70 Mac with a different equipment layout like we talked about earlier. It might be possible to use ACE parts such as the inverter cabinet, but that would probably be a serious bit of work in comparison to the Dash 9 to AC44 rebuilds, I think. Like the ACEs before them, the IACs were all small orders. Back around 2010, NS had orders on the books for ES44 AC and SD70 ACE diesels. They had been buying more of the GE product for the longest time, which totally spoke volumes. I personally have no idea why they would just order 25 AC EMD units per year over four years. It makes no sense to me. But you know, NS, they do that kind of stuff. Their first SD70 orders were all very small orders as well. One of them was only 10 units, I think. Again, personal opinion. I'm guessing it's because they gave EMD a token order every few years to use as leverage to get better pricing maybe, like I talked about earlier with UP. I guess that's why they bought approximately 250 ST70, 70M, and M-2 models and over 1,000 9s. And CSX does the same thing. Look at the 2003 order of SD70 Max, the 4700 through 48 something. <laughs> they bought about 150 of them, over three orders of course, but more than 600 AC4400 CW variants. When Norfolk Southern released the first two of its rebuilt SD70 ACU locomotives, the program which began in 2015 was the latest for the railroad to upgrade older and less reliable locomotives in its fleet. The program drew from the former 100 Union Pacific ST90 43 Max acquired secondhand from EMD. The rebuild program featured a completed electrical upgrade replacing the existing Siemens electrical equipment including the inverters with Mitsubishi Electronics. The existing cab was replaced with the new isolated SD70 ACE cab along with a number of other smaller changes to the locomotive during the rebuild. The changes essentially brought the locomotive up to the same mechanical specifications as EMD's SD70 ACEs. The first two SD70 ACUs released from Altoona were the NS number 7248 and 7283 in January of 2016. Both units were sent to the Progress Rail's Muncie, Indiana plant for testing with the third unit, number 7319, emerging from the Altoona paint shop. To accelerate the program, NS had EMD rebuild a number of ST9043 Max concurrent with the ongoing program at Altoona. The first four, numbers 7262, 7267, 7280, and 7295 were shipped to the Progress Rail Muncie plant to begin the rebuild program there. NS opted to buy the 90s and overhaul them to reduce expenses and costs, basically to save money by buying older locomotives to refurbish as opposed to buying newer locomotives which are much more expensive. They were renumbered as NS's 7229 through 7328 following right behind the SD80 Max. In 2018, Norfolk Southern and Progress Rail converted two old standard cab SD70s number 2537 and 2548 to AC traction. The new model designation for these locomotive hybrids is the SD70 ACC and included new wide noses, cabs, electrical cabinets, electrical systems, and of course, new AC traction motors.
The two original SD-70 DC to AC rebuilds were sent to the Progress Rail Facility in Patterson, Georgia. The 2537 was initially sent to the Progress Rail Plant in Muncie, Indiana before heading to Georgia, while the 2548 had been in Coalfield service on the Pocahontas Division before making its journey to the Peach State. The original cabs and electrical cabinets were replaced with a newly designed cab reminiscent of the SD-70 Max that we talked about in part one of this series. An EMD SD-70 ACE style wide nose, AAR style control stand, Mitsubishi Electronics, a new main alternator and additional weight was added to increase the maximum weight to 432,000 pounds when fully loaded with supplies, just like its GE competitor. The existing trucks were rebuilt with new AC traction motors installed. A new CCB2 computer controlled braking system was also installed. All units are equipped with PTC, that's positive train control systems, and are equipped for use in distributed power unit operation. Lastly, all are equipped with an automatic engine stop start system. After rebuilding, the two returned to Muncie and emerged with new paint and were renumbered as the 1800 and the 1801. From Indiana, they were shipped to the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado, where they underwent additional high-speed and software testing. When the testing was completed, they went to the Juniata shops for repainting before being put into active duty service. When originally rebuilt, units were rated at a whopping 4,500 horsepower, but since then, all units have been derated to 4,300 horsepower until cooling system upgrades can be designed and installed. Like the SD-70 ACU, the ACC and the C6M rebuilds are designed for heavy-duty road service, but unlike the ACUs which began life as AC traction diesels, the EMD and GE hybrids can probably expect to remain on the NS roster substantially longer. The SD-70 Mac H is an SD-70 Mac rebuilt by Progress Rail for the Metro Commuter System in Chicago. The rebuild included the addition of head-in power along with meeting Tier 3 emissions. Metra approved 15 SD-70 MACHs for passenger service with options of up to 27 more. The units will be the first six-axle passenger engine since the EMD F40C and the Alaska Railroad's head-in power equipped SD-70 MAX. Another rebuilt SD-70 MACE is the SD-70 MACE which features new Mitsubishi electronics and traction motors to replace the Siemens traction motors. They were first rebuilt for the BNSF Railway and then later rebuilt for CSX and Kansas City Southern. There are several other oddball locomotives in EMD's SD-70 AC family that I'll touch on real quick so I don't need to hear any hey you forgots or hey you left outs in the comments. There's the SD-70 ACE-T4 the SD-70 ACE-T4S, the SD-70 ACE-P4, the SD-70 ACE-BB, which is probably either a different gauge or maybe has a different truck configuration. Then there's the SD-70 ACE-P6, the SD-70 AH-T4C, which are Tier 4 credit units, and the H designating them as heavy. There's the SD-70 ACE-LCI, the SD-70 ACS, the SD-70 ACE-4S, 
and the SD70ACE slash LW. In mid-2021, Yakushin Railways received two SD70ACEs designated as 2TE3250, that's Russian, <laughs> and numbered 0001 and 0002. They are currently in use in Yakusha. A large group of 20-year-old EMD SD70 Mac road engines and much older in-cab switchers left the Kansas City Southern for public auction in East St. Louis in June. Included in the sale were 40 of the 75 SD70 Macs rostered by KCS, all of which were built for its Mexican subsidiary Ferro Viara Mexicana in 1999 and 2000. The historically all-EMD KCS opted to follow its 1989 order for new SD60s with SD40s rebuilt to SD40-3 specifications in the late 1990s, so the SD70 Max were their newest and most powerful locomotives when purchased. Though Kansas City Southern had begun upgrading these units to SD70 MACE, the move to retire them follows the arrival of the first 25 ET44AC-T4 from last year's order for 50 new GVOs. Two of the upgraded SD70 MAC units were on the sales list, the Kansas City Southern 3906 and 3946, along with all of the units that were not yet upgraded. It also follows the arrival of the new Executive Vice President, I hope I don't butcher this, I apologize if I do, Sama Fami, who previously worked with E. Hunter Harrison to reduce mechanical department operating costs and improve fleet fuel efficiency and other metrics at both CSX and Canadian National. That process has notoriously included the retirement of older, less fuel-efficient locos. He also spent three years with GE Transportation. Accordingly, it's no surprise that the auction will also include 16 of the SW1500s remaining from the 50 that KCS purchased between 1966 and 1972. Listed in the sale were KCS's 1507, 1509, 1574, 4302, 4325, 4326, 4329, 4330, 4331, 4335, 4336, 4338, 4342, 4352, 4355, and 4356. Also listed is a roster oddball KCS 1001, one of two former Corinth and Counts SW1001s retained after the takeover of the Mid-South Rail in 1994. The 1974 Switcher is one of just 112 of the models sold to U.S. buyers and was the last 1,000 horsepower Switcher offered by EMD, basically an SW1000 that was on top of a lower height SW1200 frame. Two of the most unique engines on the KCS roster rounded out the listings, the KCS 1400 and KCS 1401. Both are examples of the 1400 horsepower rail powered genset model RP14BD that was built in 2008 using as cores the two Green Goat GG20B hybrid units rail power built for them just three years earlier, Kansas City Southern's 1868 and 1869. Those were built using two former Mid-South GP-10s which had been rebuilt from GP-9s by original owner Illinois Central. With original construction dates of 1954 and 1955, they are officially the oldest units on the Kansas City Southern roster. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about regarding the in-cab switchers and gensets, but that was another video and will be another video. For Trains 21, call me AC.